Well, a couple of days ago, I finally received my Honeycomb Alpha yoke. Uh, it arrived uh, via the uh, delivery a couple days ago and I got a chance to set it up here in my uh, home cockpit using my uh, VR cockpit as you may know if you follow my channel I have a VR cockpit and a uh, standard uh, three monitor cockpit for hardware uh, just this was the easiest one to, to put it in since I have a Yoko yoke um, mounted with uh, bolts into the uh, permanently mounted into the other other um, cockpit. Well I'm very impressed uh, just initial look it was well packed came out of the box easily As you can see I have it set up on this little uh, uh, setup I have for VR flying using my Rift S. I love the Rift S vast improvement over the original Rift more on that sometime in the future. Now as I set this up I'm going to uh, fly a few scenarios here and just kinda get my initial reaction on how I think it feels as you know, a lot of experience as an airline pilot, military fighter pilot, and also general aviation. So I'd like to compare this yoke to uh, to the real thing and see how well and how uh, how it reacts. So starting off here in the uh, Cessna, you can see it has built-in switch panel for uh, avionics and generators, also all the light switches and a key. So uh, we can uh, go ahead and turn on the uh, avionics. Uh, and uh, start actually start using the, uh, the turn the strobe on here and then turn on the uh, key to uh, start very easy to set up I didn't come exactly right it wasn't perfectly set up uh, I had some uh, to change some of the things I don't know if that was my setup or what but uh, the uh, default programming in X-Plane at least wasn't exactly right I had to reassign a few of the buttons and switches once I got it set up fairly quickly, it worked just fine. As you can see, it's a beautiful piece of hardware, very nicely shaped. Uh, I like the little addition they made uh, over the tunnel shape to give it a flat surface for mounting uh, uh, add-ons and so on. It also gives you a place to set things. It gives you more of a dash look to that thing. It's got a very nice finish on it. It's kind of a rubberized, uh, soft finish over the plastic so it's very nice uh, plethora of buttons all over the place uh, you can see on the uh, left side it has a uh, uh, dual uh, uh, trim switches so you could use that with a, a Boeing or something like that where you have a, an A and a, G, a B trim and for aircraft that don't you can reassign that second one to do something uh, there's a microphone switch autopilot disconnect however you want to use them plenty of switches a hat switch on the top which is nice for people flying with a single monitor. On the right side, again, a number of other switches. I'll let you check that out on someone else's review uh, or read the read it yourself. But I'm going to take off from the intersection here at uh, Aspen. I wouldn't suggest this if you're really flying a real airplane at this density altitude. But uh, just get a feel for how this feels and grab onto this thing. It's a nice big yoke. It feels very comfortable. And it seems to move smoothly uh, on the uh, metal, the metal uh, shaft. The really uh, slow acceleration here up at the uh, high altitude of Aspen. And I think we'll get off before the end of the runway. We're going to have to run it out of runway. There we go. Okay, up uh, into the air here. I'm going to climb up a bit maybe maneuver a little, maybe a couple, maybe a steep turn and then a, a stall. But I'm not going to climb up to altitude, that would take too much time. But I do want to get a little idea how this thing handles. Um, the, um, all in all, from my previous experience in just a couple short flights, uh, I really like the way this yoke feels. Uh, as I said, I have the Yoko, which is probably the gold standard for non force feedback yokes. And uh, this is a little light in the aileron. Uh, the, the aileron roll is a little soft feeling to me. But the pitch I like a lot. It has quite a bit of resistance. It's very precise. I'm amazed. I think it might even have better resolution than the Yoko. It certainly is good. So I like the way it feels. I'm going to uh, just kind of make a, a couple or a steep turn here and just fly around with a little bit more 
back pressure and see how it feels. And it does feel quite, quite realistic, I think. The, uh, you will notice that the yoke, it seems like the yoke is moving slightly more than the uh, yoke in the sim. I don't know why that is, but uh, the yoke feels quite, quite realistic. Uh, really, uh, really impressed by this yoke for the price. I think I, I got the pre-order at uh, 220 or so, and I think 250 is the final price. And I can tell you that if you're using a Satek yoke, uh, I would throw that thing away right away. It has that difficult detent in the middle. It's right where you need it for flare and landing and trimming, and it's just it's awkward. It, it, it's it's unrealistic. I used uh, on my, this cockpit until today. I've been using a, a CH yoke which even though it's plastic and very cheap felt a lot better. Now let's try a stall here. Just uh, stall characteristics of X-Plane have improved greatly with the 11.4 uh, aerodynamics upgrade. And the wings drop off now. They're just keep it back until we get fully stalled. There's a wing drop off. We'll add some power, level the wings, and fly out. So yeah, feels real good on the yoke. No problem there. Okay, let's turn back around towards the field. I'd like to land, and I, I don't know about you, but I think the, the most difficult thing, the thing I didn't like about FSX, hopefully the new FS2020 uh, will, will improve that with their new method of doing aerodynamics, but it, in landing, I felt like I was just driving it onto the runway. And although uh, I've flown the DC-9 and you can do it that way, most airplanes, you're, you're pretty much holding it off and trying to get the airspeed bled off and, just level the airplane in the flare and kind of ease it down to the runway instead of kind of driving it on. And uh, the few landings I've done with this yoke, it, it works really well. It has real, a real nice feel, very precise feel in the flare. Uh, and it allows you to, uh, to actually flare it. I'll tell you, wearing these uh, VR goggles and flying with the VR goggles, it's, it's, it's very, very good landing training. I believe because you get the effect of the 3D and uh, you know so you have the depth perception and then when you throw in the uh, a, a, a yoke like the Yoko or, or this yoke that has a really good feel where it's very precise and you can you can make minor minute changes to kind of for example when you balloon you can kind of freeze the yoke or ease it a tiny bit forward and then come right back in on the back pressure to catch it uh, you can do that sort of thing, so you can practice that sort of thing in the sim. Now this is not, a, obviously the force gradients are not the same as in the airplane, uh, but, the, but the visual and the uh, kind of the muscle memory of which way you're moving things certainly is. So I think it's a really good, a good uh, training aid. Uh, and uh, Okay, so as we're coming in here, a little power on. to pick up the glide path here and as we uh, get over the numbers we'll wipe the power clean and, uh, and then just just watch watch the yoke as I'm moving it in and out a little bit to, to, uh, as I'm trying to bleed the speed off to make a nice touchdown. So here we go coming over the fence and here goes the power and we'll just hold it off, hold it off, hold it off, easing back. See the, Yoke movement, say in and out just a little bit. Hold it off, hold it off. Okay, okay, and we're on the ground. So I find that very realistic. I'll tell you, this is as good a yoke as I've flown as far as that part, that that feel. Obviously not durable as the uh, as the Yoko, but on the other side of the coin, a little over braking there. As the next plane is so familiar with. Anyway, as you can see, it's it's prettier than the Yoko for sure, which is just a little box. The switches are really nice if you're starting out as a simmer and you want to get set up and you want to have some realism without having to spend a lot of money adding uh, other hardware. So I think this is an awesome, awesome sim uh, choice for uh, beginners. Uh, if you can afford 250 bucks, this is the first piece of hardware I'd buy. And I think probably uh, uh, the throttle is going to be equally good. I sure hope so. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I would uh, I think this is a great way to start off your sim, building your sim hardware with this and uh, some kind of rudder pedals. Uh, okay, so 
here we are pulling back into the gate here at uh, Aspen. I'm gonna I'm gonna set this thing up uh, and come back in a moment. We're gonna fly the uh, the one of my favorites. I love that little uh, X plane uh, default uh, vi vision jet by Cirrus, and uh, it's a lot of fun to fly. So uh, hang on here. We'll be right back after I set it up. Okay, so here we are in the Vision Jet at uh, Orange County, uh, Santa Ana, and um, although it's a side stick, of course, it's still, uh, let's just pretend that uh, we have a yoke in this thing, and uh, we approach rotation speed. Just a little, very, very precise uh, landing pitch. gear going up. I'm using, uh, by the way, I'm using plain command to do the, uh, uh, to call the commands and have the gear and the flaps uh, operated for me. If you haven't looked at that, I got a video on that. It's really a cool program, very inexpensive. Flaps going up all the way. But it allows you to, uh, in VR especially, it's handy because you can just say, you know, gear up, flaps up set altitude 8000 and so on that sort of thing if you haven't seen the video i did one a while back this is a beta of the newer version which now is going to allow you to create custom commands so you can make uh, make the uh, terminology fit perfectly with your flight operations manual or however you do that uh, whatever flight manual you have pilot handbook and so on so that the call outs can be standardized or just be what you like to say and so that it'll recognize your your uh, commands and uh, for flying a multi-place airplane, it's especially useful. So here we are down one now at uh, Santa Ana. Just going to fly this around and see how it feels with the uh, a slightly faster, more responsive aircraft than the uh, than the uh, Cessna. This thing uh, came very well packed in uh, very well packed in. Uh, styrofoam, kind of soft styrofoam, in a box, double box. Landing gear so going down. There goes the gear, and, uh, and, and it was uh, well packed and uh, easy to set up, uh, just down a USB to one half. connection, and uh, it's self-powered. I use the uh, metal clamps, as you can see, there's a suction cup that'll mount onto a nice flat surface if you have that. This was a little too porous, uh, but those clamps, as you can see, fit right into that unit and it snaps right in the bottom and allows you with screw knobs to uh, tighten that underneath. It seems quite uh, quite durable and uh, secure. Okay, turn in on a base leg here. Get all the flaps down here shortly and we'll be uh, on final. Flaps going down all the way. Flaps already down. Flaps already down. I don't know what's with this uh, beta doing the flaps already down, already down, but that is uh, not quite uh, the way it used to work. So I don't know, maybe uh, plane command has a little bug that's going to have to be worked out. As I said, this is the beta. So here we are on final. Uh, real nice feel on the ailerons. Uh, a little bit, uh, very nice. Control. I like the way it feels. It's great. It's a great. Uh, it's really a nice yoke and uh, well worth it. I, I know I keep saying that over and over, but it, it truly is. And watch the flare. You can really hold it off, 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 hold it off. And there we are. Rolled it right on. So, so all in all, uh, so far I really like this yoke. I want to try one more thing here, and that's fly my uh, old alma mater, the Boeing, uh, one of the airliners that I flew towards uh, before I retired, and I'm very familiar with that. I just wanted to give that a try. So here we go on final. Uh, not even sure where we're landing here, but five hundred. 500 on in, just kind of getting the feel of this thing. We're fully configured, gear down, flaps. 30. As I said, you can set up 
now uh, X plane's been changed so that you can have uh, two channels of trim, uh, two a trim, trim one or trim A and trim B for elevator. One hundred. And again, 50, really a 20, good pitch, feeling pitch. I 20, really like it. Just hold it off. Hold it 10, off. Hold it off. Hold it off. And I mean, you can ease the nose down too. It's very nice. I got to say that this yoke is really well thought out. It, it offers an awful lot for the price. The switches really are a nice, a nice addition, and they're well thought out and well, well laid out, and uh, uh, just plenty of uh, buttons to assign too. So flaps up to 25 this is, uh, degrees. Quite a, quite a, a nice yoke. Flaps up uh, zero that degrees. Has been, uh, developed flaps already zero degrees. degrees. My, uh, my conclusions in a moment. As you can probably guess from my previous uh, comments, I give the honeycomb yoke, uh, the alpha yoke, a big thumbs up. I highly recommend it for especially entry level simmers and um, intermediate level simmers. Uh, as I said, it's well constructed, seems to be solid, comes with a good warranty, well packed. And most of all, and the thing that bothered me most when I started simming after, you know, 23,000 hours of, of flying and, and uh, decades of flying professionally, when I started simming was that in the pitch, uh, for example, the Satek and, and even some of the others, some of the um, uh, go-flight yokes I've tried, uh, have a, a bit of roughness and stiffness and catchiness in the pitch. And that makes it extremely hard, especially when a yoke doesn't have a whole lot of force to, to make minute changes that are needed uh, in the flare to uh, make a nice landing, realistic landing. So, uh, maybe not too important with uh, some sims, but uh, well, certainly with X-Plane and probably with FS2020, you're going to want to have a yoke where you can uh, make those minute changes because the simulator is going to respond. So anyway, uh, I would hi highly recommend this yoke. Um, realistic expectations that it's not going to last forever but it seems to be well constructed uh, as I said a little weak in the uh, aileron resistance but the pitch is really nice and I think that's probably the most important so thanks for watching if you like my videos I'd appreciate it if you would uh, give me a like or and subscribe if you haven't already you can click the notification bell if you want to be notified when I do more videos as you notice, I don't monetize these. I'm doing it just because it's it's a fun hobby for me in retirement, and I'm pretty passionate about simming, uh, also aviation too. So uh, I'll cover several topics uh, in the future that may interest you. So stay connected. I hope to see you back here when I make my next video. Thanks.